And uh, Nick, uh, we're going to be starting off with one of our top news stories, uh, starting off with Marley. Hi to you, Catherine, this Friday. Yes, indeed, Marley. And a two-page spread in the Wall Street Journal Europe edition. And it is looking at what it says are the French Mali attack showing flaws in the West's security plan. There you can see that headline there. Now, what's that about? The argument in this, in this very, very long article is that France's attack on ex Islamic extremists in Mali is exposing major strains in uh, the Western world's alliance. And the biggest breakdown of all, it argues, is between Paris and Washington. The argument here is that Paris expected robust, quick support from Washington, and uh, Washington is now saying that maybe some of its messages in all the meetings that have taken place in recent months have actually been lost in translation. Can you believe it, Catherine? I mean, we were experts on that. And Washington is saying there was no specific support. Mm -hmm. um, so the paper overall, the Wall Street Journal Europe, is saying, in fact, what we're seeing is a transatlantic disconnect um, on the uh, whole Mali crisis. I seem to remember Susan Rice, the uh, American ambassador to the United Nations, calling the French plan for Mali something along the lines of rubbish a few weeks ago. So, yeah, it does sound like they're not quite on the same page, doesn't it? Indeed. Um, Elsewhere, speaking about Mali, we've got something from the African press. Well, I dug around to see what was um, happening this Friday in the African papers, and I found this, which is actually in the Guinea-Conakry um, uh, Website.info, so sort of news website. And there you can see Mali at war, uh, the African Union somewhat wary as well. So, not just West Western nations were wary about this conflict, but also um, uh, countries in Africa. Now, just I have to be very clear that the um, involvement of 6,000 African troops on the ground in Mali is spearheaded by ECOWAS, the West African body. The interesting thing about this article is it's asking, hey, there's another body in Africa called the African Union. Mm -hmm. What's it doing? What's it saying? And it says the silence has been deafening for two weeks. And why is that? The argument in this kind of fairly polemical piece in um, this um, article is, is saying, well, really, um, the head of the AU is, is, is stuck, really. Either they make statements and make um, get involved, which could then be interpreted by critics as being somehow backing neo-colonialism in Africa, which is a heavy, you know, difficult area to go to. That means that its overall strategy is just a wall of silence, say nothing, because otherwise you're going to be seen as, um, you know, not getting it right in the balance between support for Islamic extremism in the region and um, what could be seen as neocolonialism. OK, well, uh, moving on then to Korea, a sabre rattling once again. Well, Pyongyang is threatening a third nuclear test. Um, it says that it will bring the US within reach of a nuclear strike. The Guardian is reporting on this, as are lots of the papers. Um, the quote in The Guardian is, settling accounts with the US needs to be done with force, not with words, that quote from the North Koreans. For analysis, I turn to the Jung Ang Daily, which is in Seoul in South Korea, and it's saying that, in fact, all this is, yes, indeed, sabre rattling. It's a gesture, no less, a way of attracting Washington's attention. What we need now, it says, is a, is a, is a really a major breakthrough. Obama and Kerry are in place. They should really pursue an end to the 60-year truce that has taken place between the two Koreas and actually draft uh, with the two Koreas a full peace treaty. So it's saying that, in fact, we, we could be seeing that um, a crucial moment for, the South, for South and North Korea. OK, and just very briefly, uh, some reaction to that decision in the United States to allow women into those full combat roles on the battlefield? Well, it's on the uh, front page of uh, the Times of London today. You know, women um, to the forefront, to the front line, towards front line combat. Um, the USA Today International Edition, also the front cover, um, has that. Um, that paper is pointing out that, in fact, this decision is not really a shock. What we've seen in the Iraq and Afghan conflicts is 152 female US troops who have died in deployment. And um, Scottish paper, The Herald, is asking, well, should women really be on the front line? It says the debate is on. It's not really about men versus women or who, or who should do what. It's about who is the right person. Um, that's the, some of the debate that's um, going on. Very interesting debate, which I'm sure will continue on. Thanks very much, Nicholas Rushworth, with that look at the international papers. OK, a reminder of our headlines then here on France 24.